This is a Marklin ECE one gauge engine from 1925 that turned up right here in the USA. As common with German made toy locos of a hundred years ago, it has a motor that runs on a voltage much higher than most toy trains. The great thing about this find is that no one has ever messed with it. Well, for the most part. It's likely that I'll be able to get this working without too much trouble. I've removed the old wire and a lot of crud and have started the rewiring and reassembly. This is a Marklin high voltage motor that has what I call a pretzel field winding. It's a bundle of wire wrapped in mummy cloth twisted around the motor frame. It can be removed. I suspect Marklin used this removable field winding so a motor's voltage could be changed. Coming out the bottom here, I've grafted on a new green wire that will be connected to the brush plate. The brush plate with the armature is the pathway to the ground. On top, I've grafted on a black wire which will go to the pickup. So it's the entry wire for the current. I've made a little solder tail on the green wire to keep it secure. These Marklin terminals are really small. These Marklin motors are a pain, but one great thing about them is the way the armature pops in and out. You don't have to pull off the pinion gear or press it back on. These are the original motor brushes. They are worn down, so I want to replace them. Now, where do you get brushes for a 100-year-old Marklin motor? As it happens, some commonly available brush sizes for old American trains, such as pre- and post-World War II Lionel, will fit. Now I'm ready to test with a Variac, a transformer that puts out up to 110 volts. I have the motor in a glass bowl deliberately. Lots of insulation here, lots of precautions, lots of respect for the high voltage current. It's running at 39 volts, that's very good. Very good, 39 volts. It needs lubrication, that's why it makes so much noise. The very complicated 65 remote control reverse also energizes. This thing is what I call the crab claw. It's a sprung toggle device commonly used in old Marklin equipment. As usual, this one is sticky. It's probably due to springs that have lost their tension. I'm going to leave the whole reverse unit disconnected for now. Even if the reverse is disconnected, one can lock in the direction with a lever. This is how the motor with only two wires reverses. Under these two arms are three contacts. The green wire I installed earlier goes to a, the center contact. The placement of these arms determines the direction of the current flow and the direction of the engine. The last big step was to rewire the lights in the car illumination socket. I couldn't rewire the lights in series with the motor as originally done, but I can rewire them in series independent of the motor. The circuit starts with this Marklin 3.5 millimeter plug that connects to a lead from the center rail. The wire goes to this uh, lighting socket in the cab, then continues to a headlight up front. The headlight is connected to the other headlight, so on 50 volts, the train is running on 50 volts, we put two 24-volt headlights in this. So the wire from the other headlight goes back to the lighting socket in the rear. The circuit is closed by putting this little lever down. If there are cars with lights, the circuit is closed by a tail light at the end of the train. So here you can see the duck sticker is gone. I'm ready to take it out on the road. I 
about 60 volts. 